let's modify this a little bit and let's look at a geom bar because a lot of people are going to do this on bar graph so um, I'll just break it off for a little bit so let's just do a geom bar here and remember for geom bar for this type of thing you need to put stat equals identity and instead of color we'll change this to fill let's see what this gives us pretty awesome so now you see that they're stacked on top of each other and that's not always what you want so I haven't done bar charts yet but we'll add this in real quick position equals dodge this is gonna allow you to put them on two different um, so they're side to side Actually, I know we would see them pretty neat they're pretty close together so I'm gonna actually change the width on that to make it a little bit more space So this width, the smaller you put that width, the more space between them. Oh. Forgot the comma. One more, let's do point eight. It's still pretty tight, but it's a little better. And so now, again, the expand limits, we don't need it here, so we can delete it. And let's add that GM air bar and see what happens. Whoa, so it's pretty big and it's pretty, um, it's not what we want right here. So this is a kind of a mess up and this is what you see in the beginning. So how do you fix that? So to fix it, you're going to just add a couple of um, parameters in your GeoAmbar bar here. And this is specifically for um, bar charts. So let's change that width to 0.8 first. Still really big. We have to add position. Position dodge, point eight. So now we're kind of aligning everything up. It's pretty tedious, but it works. So now you have it right. So you need the position dodge, and then you need to set the width too. So now you get it, and it's still a little big, so you can still make it smaller, so point four if you don't want to take the whole row the whole um, bar there we're getting something pretty close and you kind of have to play around with these numbers so um, it's not exact science you, you really have to it's kind of like a little of an art and just have to play around with these numbers but that's how you get something like this so if you have a bar chart with different types of groupings and you want to do um, conference intervals like that that's how you would go about it so the next thing is let's look at um, standard standard errors if you want to change it up and do that so using the same one we'll change this so let's use standard error instead and this is really simple all you're going to do is change your ll95 and ul95 to rate minus sc and rate plus sc put that in that's your standard error Pretty nice, and if you put this to G on point, see, G on point, and you can delete all this because this is for just for the air bars. Change this color. Uh, extra quote right there so now when you try that you're going to get your GM air bars again you probably have to put back in the expand limits and let's put it 220 uh, 240 And there you go. I think you should probably move that down. There you go. That's basically how you do that. And then we can add our, our titles and our labels again to finish off this chart.
remember the backslash n is to give a little bit of space so i always give a little bit of space because i think it's always too close so i always do that rate per 100,000 I believe it's age adjusted and then title So there you go you're gonna have your rates by state and then you're gonna have your air bars around this and this is actually this um, the standard air so you can do conference at level the standard airs um, both in the similar style you can just for um, this you're just subtracting the standard air from the rate and then adding the standard error to the rate to get your Y max and your Y min. So basically that's how you do it. So the next one we're gonna look at is a pretty cool one too. And this is the last one, it's kind of a little bit advanced, but um, this is a nicer way to do it. And so I'm gonna use a geom error bar. So we'll delete this off here. Oh, next actually geom error bar, but geom ribbon. So um, using this, we have our geom point and we're gonna add geom ribbon and geom ribbon the syntax for it is actually on this site too. You can go down and it gives you something like this, but that looks pretty ugly. So that's not how I use it. I use it just to visualize my conference intervals. And so we're going to do geom ribbon aesthetics again, y max. And this is really similar syntax to um, geom error bar. We'll do out, um, upper limit 95. Y min, lower limit, 95. We'll see what that gives us. Pretty neat, but it's not usable. It's filled with this weird thing, so let's change that. Fill equals state. wrong place put in the aesthetics there we go there's our chart and I'd like to do one extra thing so let's put back the expand limits again let's put all this stuff back and then let's add an alpha channel so alpha channel is gonna let it be um, transparent Let's put alpha 0.5, just so you can see through it. Pretty nice. So this is a cool way. I like to like like the conference intervals. If they overlap, then I know that they are um, they're not significantly different, um, statistically significantly different. But um, there's also that's just a very easy and crude way of doing it. So that's not the best um, test for significance. But that's just one way and an easy way that we use. Probably a little bit too much. But if you're into stats, you can um, write something in the comments. But this is just an easy way to visualize it really quickly. And I, this is what I use a lot at work. So I um, hope you guys enjoyed that video. It is a little long, but it is a little um, complicated because of all these different, yet they call aesthetics a little bit more than you would in a normal ggplot. But this is what I do on a daily basis when I'm um, creating my charts at work. But um, if you have any other requests for videos or you have any questions about this video, please put it in the comments. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And remember to like and subscribe to this video. Thank you. Bye.